In this short video, we're going to continue our discussion about motion in space and tie it back to some of the other concepts we've learned in this chapter. So if we consider the a, uh, vector function as being the position function, then we can think of the parameter t as representing time. And we then have a uh, particle moving with a certain velocity, speed, and acceleration through our path. Now, if I take a fixed point and I look at the acceleration vector, it's going to be contained in the oscillating plane. But the oscillating plane is the plane determined by the unit tangent vector and the normal vector. And so um, it, we're going to find that it's useful, instead of expressing our acceleration vector using our i, j, and k unit component vectors, it's more useful in many cases to use the unit tangent vector and the unit normal vector. In other words, what we're trying to do is try to find two scalars, a sub t and a sub n, where we could write the acceleration vector as the sum of a sub t times the unit tangent vector plus a sub n times the unit normal vector. Those scalars actually give us important information about the system. The a sub t we call the tangential component of acceleration, and the a sub n is called the normal component of acceleration. So let's see if we can determine what these scalars should be. First, we're going to start by finding a formula that we could use to actually calculate them. So we have a vector diagram. We said that the acceleration vector is the sum of these two vectors, a sub t times the unit tangent vector, plus a sub n times the unit normal vector. Well, that would lead me to a right triangle whose hypotenuse is the length of the acceleration vector. The legs are the uh, uh, tangential and normal components of acceleration. And we have this angle theta. Theta is going to be the angle between the acceleration vector and the unit tangent vector. And so uh, using just basic triangle trigonometry, the tangential component of acceleration would be the length of the acceleration vector times cosine theta while the normal component of acceleration would be the length of the acceleration vector times sine theta. And again, remember, theta is the angle between the acceleration vector and the unit tangent vector. Well, that opens the door for us because cosine of theta, we have a formula for that using the dot product. So if I replace cosine of theta with acceleration vector dotted with the unit tangent vector over their lengths, that tells me that, boy, this, there's a lot of simplification here. It's a unit tangent vector, so the length of t is 1. I have a multiplication by the length of a, and then I divide by length of a, so that's going to be 1. So I'm just left with a dotted with t. And if we remember the definition, of a, a we could consider as the second derivative of the position vector, whereas the uh, unit tangent is r prime over the length of r. So a very useful formula for calculating the uh, tangential component of acceleration is just to take the dot product of r double prime with r prime and divide it by the length of r prime. And I see that I need to fix that. 
because the prime should be on the inside. So just a little. Rewrite here the length of our prime. Okay, can do better than that. All right, and then I'll have to go back and fix these slides because we can do the same thing with sine theta. We have a formula for sine theta involving the magnitude of the cross product. So I could take the magnitude of the cross product of a cross t, divide that by the magnitude of a and the magnitude of t. And I get a similar uh, simplification. I would just have then the magnitude of a cross t, but a again is our double prime, t is r prime over the magnitude of r prime. And so I get a similar formula, which would be useful for calculating this value uh, using just r double prime and r prime. So there's a lot of, uh, similarity to these formulas. The tangential component uses the dot product. Uh, both of these have to be scalars. So with the normal component, I'm using the cross product, which would give me a vector to make it into a scalar, then I'll need to take its length. And then both are divided by the length of r prime. So those are useful formulas for actually calculating those components. Let's see if we can tie those back to some of the things we've learned before and get a hint as to why it would be useful to use this representation of the acceleration vector. All right, we've got our two formulas here and one will still need to be fixed. And uh, well, let's go back and look at speed. Speed is um, the length of the velocity vector. And we could think of that as being um, r prime dotted with itself, and then you take the square root. So I'm going to write to this, this as the 1 half power. We did this in a previous video, but let's just go through it again. So then I can take the derivative of the speed. Remember this V with no arrow is speed. And I would just first use the power rule. And then I have to use the chain rule. And then the chain rule, taking the derivative of the inside, I'll have to use the product rule. So the derivative of the first would be R double prime dotted with there should be now a prime here plus r prime dotted with r double prime. And I can collect the like terms here and use the properties of the dot product, which says I could write both of those as r double prime dotted with r prime. And That will simplify to being a fraction r double prime dotted with r prime over r prime dotted with itself, take the square root. So see what I did here? This was a minus one half, so I brought it down into the denominator with a power of one half. But that is exactly our formula for the tangential component of acceleration. So what does that mean? That means that the tangential component of acceleration is the change in speed. 
It's the derivative of speed. The tangential component is telling me how fast is this velocity vector changing in terms of length? How fast is the length of the velocity vector changing? That's what the tangential component of acceleration tells me. All right. Now let's bring back some memories about curvature. Curvature had a formula that looks very much like this normal component of acceleration. And except for instead of having uh, just the magnitude of r prime, it has the magnitude of r prime cubed. So I could go ahead and multiply both sides of this equation for curvature by the length of r prime squared. And then I'll get this relation right here, which shows that the, this formula, which is the normal component of acceleration, is just the curvature times the velocity squared. So now we have a, an interpretation for the normal component. And now if you think about that, right, uh, the normal component is, is going to be perpendicular to the tangential component. And so this says that the normal component of acceleration is going to be, depend on the curvature. The bigger the curvature, the bigger the normal component and your velocity. So if you've driven a car or ridden a motorcycle or even a bicycle or maybe even you know, done anything that was moving, skateboard, snowboard, anything, you know that when you're making a turn, the force that is trying to throw you out of the turn, which is would be the normal component of acceleration times the mass, that force depends on two things. It depends on how tight the turn is, and in this case, it's the square of the velocity. So we know that it really uh, matters how fast you're going, but really the, it's the square of the velocity. So now I can write my uh, acceleration vector in two meaningful ways. It's going to have two components. In the direction that you're going now, the component on that unit tangent vector is telling you the change, the rate of change in the length of the velocity vector. Whereas the normal component is related to the rate of change of the direction of the velocity vector. All right, still have a mistake I need to fix there. The prime should be on the inside. All right, so if you have an object based on the, these notions here, which is accelerating in a straight line, then, well, its normal component of acceleration should be zero. It's going in a straight line. The curvature of a straight line is zero. And so the only way that it can be changing, its velocity vector can be changing, is if the magnitude of the velocity vector is changing. The direction vector doesn't change. I mean, the direction of the vector is not changing when you're going in a straight line. And on the other hand, if you have a constant speed on any type of curve, uh, then the uh, tangential component is going to be zero. Uh, remember the tangential component is telling you how is the magnitude of the velocity vector changing. The magnitude of the velocity vector 
is the speed. And if the speed is not changing, then that component should be zero. So those are kind of our two extremes. So let's finish with an actual example where we want to calculate the normal and tangential components of acceleration. We're given a position function. So we're going to be using the first formulas that we found. So we'll need the uh, derivatives. We'll need r prime and we'll need r double prime. That's going to be our acceleration vector. We'll need the magnitude of the cross product. So let's start by taking the cross product of r prime by r double prime. All right, we get a nice constant vector there. We can calculate its length and that'll just be radical 16 plus 4, that's radical 20, which we can simplify as 2 radical 5. I uh, also need the length of r prime, and so that is not going to be a, a constant, uh, but it's not a bad expression. It simplifies to 4t squared plus 5. And finally, the dot product of r prime with r double prime is not constant either. It gives me a simple expression, though, for t. So using our formulas, the tangential component is the dot product of r prime with r double prime over the length of, uh, of um, that should be r prime. So let me fix that. And so that's just going to be 4t over radical 4t squared plus 5. Then for our normal component of acceleration, Again, it's just the magnitude of the cross product, which we calculated over the length of r prime, which we already calculated. And so that will give me 2 radical 5 over the same expression, radical 4t squared plus 5. Now we can actually check our result because there is a, you know, these normal vectors and ten, tangential and normal unit vectors are orthogonal to each other. So we should be able to take the square of the length of the first vector plus the square of the length of the second vector is the square of the hypotenuse. We should have that Pythagorean relationship. And so uh, if I take the square of uh, a sub t, and I add it to the square of a sub n, and do some little bit of algebra. First, I'll combine the like terms. I'll write it as a single fraction first. And then after I write it as a single fraction, I'll see that there's a common factor in the uh, both terms of the numerator. So let me go ahead and factor that out. And I see there's a common factor in the numerator and the denominator, which is good. That's going to be a really nice simplification. And with that simplification, it just comes down to 4. And if I look at my acceleration vector, it only has uh, one non-zero component is, with, is 2. So its length would be 2 and I square that, I get 4. So that's exactly what I wanted. And so I apologize for the lack of proofreading. But that ends our discussion on motion in space.